I feel like preaching my first sermon when I said, first giving all praises and glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Giving honor to God who is the head of my life. Uh, to all of you, my Heavenly Father's children, it is good for us to be here. It is good for us to be here. As they will say, in the land of the living. On our way. And let me tell you something, in the land of the dying, on our way to the land of the living, and they would say, it is just good to be on the ground. And the ground not be on you. You ought to praise God that you are alive. give honor to my wife. Can you praise God for her? God bless you. And to my family and to all of you all who are here today, I just feel like there's a shift about to happen in this room today. And some of y'all almost didn't make it today. And you made the decision. God says, I'm going to meet you right here. I'm going to meet you right here. I'm going to meet you right here. Praise God for a church uh, that makes a difference. I was looking at the numbers that Mike sent me. Do you know we, we have fed over 3,300 families this year? Isn't that amazing? You multiply that. If every family has a child or two, you multiply the numbers. Uh, we're, we're making a difference. We're making a difference, and we're doing it off of our seeds uh, and our sowing, and I praise God. Uh, that we are responsive to the needs of our community. I want to I want to share something with you today, um, and I'm going to tell you the topic now. How many of you all have been confused over the last three or four months, somewhere around, just trying to figure out, God, what in the world are you doing? Let me see your hands if you've been confused. Touch your name. Say, I've been confused all year. I don't, I don't know what he's talking about. Three or four months. I've been confused since 2018. I, when that pandemic hit, I ain't got my balance right yet. Today, I want to use for a subject, God, make it make sense. <laughs> God, all this hell I've been through. All of the people that I thought were going to be there the rest of the way. This job situation that I'm dealing with, this health, this body, what is it doing? God, just make it make sense. Okay. Genesis chapter 7. Genesis 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come, thou and your whole house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteousness before me in this generation. I'm just going to stop right there. Go to 1 Peter. As you know all about the beast of the field and the two by two, you know all of that. But go to 1 Peter chapter 3. Now, I, I didn't see this until recently, literally in the last two weeks. Now, this is, this is Peter, the apostle Peter. Speaking about Noah, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, for Christ also has once suffered for sins and just for the unjust that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the Spirit by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison which, listen, sometimes were disobedient. 
when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing wherein few that is eight souls were saved by the water so so the writer of Genesis Moses tells us about and I didn't read it in length because most of us and I'll explain it know the story of Noah where the whole world was disobedient and God said I repent that I made man and so he created a flood allowed it to rain for 40 days and 40 nights and everybody except for Noah's family was killed that didn't make sense to me I didn't understand that until I got over to first Peter 3 and God says that while you were worried about those people who got killed I went to hell and I preached to them, giving them a chance to accept me. See, it ain't over until it's over. And the reason why it doesn't make sense to most of you all is because you get stuck at the flood. Whatever, whenever the water is going up in your life, whenever stress is going up, whenever misunderstanding, you get stuck at the flood and you don't know that God has flood assurance. That he always has a plan for the thing you don't understand. Now, I'm telling every one of you all who are looking at me right now, this thing is going to turn around in your favor. You hear me, Brandon? I don't care what it is. Touch, touch your neighbor and say, it's going to work in your favor. That's not hyperbole. That's, that's scripture. All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called so it's not hyperbole it's facts slap somebody say it's facts I'm gonna spend the next few minutes making it make sense on your way to your seat just shout God make it make sense you may be seated in the presence of the Lord y'all got time today Ecclesiastes 11 and 5 says that just as you do not know, listen to me, just as you do not know the way the Spirit comes into the bones in the womb of a woman having a child, so you do not know the works of God who makes everything. I have already preached. Is what he's saying. Just like you don't know how I started the gestation period in the womb of a woman, so you do not know the course of action I will take to make sure that you give birth. The thing that most of us don't like about God is he doesn't talk too much. Oh, we love gossipers. We love people who talk all the time. But God is a quiet dude. He don't speak until it's time and he don't care how much anxiety you have to endure in the process and the reason why he doesn't care about how much anxiety you have to endure in the process is because if you trusted him you wouldn't have the anxiety so he is under no obligation to reduce a storm that you caused He doesn't have to say peace be still on this one because that ain't his wind and it ain't his waves. You caused that anxiety. There is one quote that says that the worst thing a person can do is overthink. It's because anybody who overthinks only thinks about thoughts. And anybody who thinks about thoughts 
has no ability to reason with reality because his ways are not. Oh, here it is. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. That's, that's in the word of God. That's Isaiah 55 and 8. That his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And I don't want to be rude, but I just want to let you know, as smart as you are, you don't think like God. Did, did you hear what I said? I, I know you think that you and God's thought level is kind of similar. He way smarter than you. Are you listening to me? Don't forget that scripture, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. Thoughts. Everybody say thoughts. Thoughts in the Hebrew literally mean to invent. So that means that the situation that you're going through right now God didn't invent it or allow it to be invented for the same purpose you're thinking about. You can't even conceive why your father was not in your life. You think it's because your mom and daddy didn't like each other. You don't know God never intended them to be. Are you listening to me? You think you lost a job because of the economy. You didn't lose the job because of the economy. You lost a job because God knew what your reaction to losing that job would be, and he knew what you would do, and so he created a set of circumstances surrounded around your response because he does not allow the thing to happen to you for the same reason you think it happened to you. You didn't get in a car accident only because you were not paying attention. He knew that you would hit somebody or somebody would hit you. And then when you got to the doctor and they were looking at the broken leg, they would find the cancer cell. Because he doesn't do things the way that we do them. His thoughts, his inventions. He literally does not have the same purpose for your trauma that you do. For you, the trauma may say, you know what? I'm going to be more protective of myself. God's invention may be, I want you to be more open with yourself. You get hurt and you say, you know what? That's why I'm fool with nobody. God's design may be, I'm calling you as a prophet to the nations. And so the tension between destiny and detour is you finding out why God allowed it and not how you feel about it. Who am I talking to already? <laughs> Slap your neighbor and say, uh, I ain't come here for that. I ain't come here for that. I ain't come here for that. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways, the word Derek in the Hebrew, his ways are not our ways. That word Derek in the Hebrew means his direction isn't my direction which means that God and I very rarely agree on which way he wants me to go. Do you know how good I'm preaching right now? Like this is probably the best sermon I've ever preached today. Do you understand that no matter what, no matter how good your intentions are, no matter how much you think you know what's best for you, you and God rarely, if ever, agree on the direction your life should take. You would avoid all pain if possible. Oh, no, no, no. You would not have met that brother in the mall and been heartbroken in six months if it was up to you. No, you wouldn't. Come on, holler at your boy. No, you would not have met that sister and took her to meet your mama only to find out that she was just wanting to have a good time and she wasn't looking to settle down. And God knows all of the children in this building wasn't planned. Holler at me now. Look at me. You had them, but you ain't planned it. God rarely agrees with you on the direction, if ever, because his ways are not your ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. Newsflash, God doesn't agree. 
not because you're wrong, but because he's all-knowing. That means that God knows some things you don't know yet, which is what makes him God, because he knows the end from the beginning. The only thing you know the difference between is the past and now. And since you are not omniscient and you don't have the benefit of tomorrow's experience, that's why we have to lean and trust God because he's the only one that knows the beginning of the moving, the plot twist, and the outcome. All you have is daily bread. So we don't know as much as we think. And when you don't have all of the evidence, and when you don't have all of the clues, and you don't have all of the information, it is very difficult for you to be trusted with the direction of your life because you would choose a direction that is in opposition to your future. Why? Because most of us make our decisions on how we feel right. Holler at me if I'm talking to here. How many of you have ever said something in your feelings that you regretted when you got out of them? Now, for those of y'all who don't regret nothing, we got a whole nother sermon for you. For you, I ain't never sorry, people. That's a whole series. This is what I'm saying. When the Bible says his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts, it literally means that you and God don't have the same direction in mind for your life. You would go from poor straight to rich. God said, you got some character defects, so we're going to go up and down. You don't treat people right, so let me take you back down. Oh, you got a little attitude problem, so let me take you back down. Oh, back then you was all right. Now you got a little change you starting to act for. Let me take you back down and humble your butt. When you ain't had no job, you was at the altar, but now you got a job. You ain't been to church all Let me take your butt back down here. When your car wouldn't start, you was out there praying, but now you got a new BMW. Let me, let me let that BMW start acting up. Am I making it make sense already? The reason why it doesn't make sense is because it is what you expected to come out of it and what God planted in it to make sure that it would be because the only thing that God is concerned about, listen, is glory. And he will get it out of whomever and whatever he so desires. Why? Because the earth is the Lord's. The fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. And I don't understand why this doesn't make sense to you because everything in your house gives you glory. It's the couch you want. Huh? It's the television you want. If the children don't give you the glory that you want, they got to go in the room until they understand the glory process. Everything in the refrigerator gives you glory. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Everything about what you constructed gives you glory. So why should God have to consult you about what goes on in his house? I, I know you thought, Lord, make it make sense, man. Ooh, I'm going to finally find out what they're doing wrong. No, just stay with me. I want you to think of it this way. Everybody say momentum. momentum. Say it again. Say momentum. momentum. How many of y'all watched the Astro game yesterday? Okay. Some of y'all like baseball. Boo. Okay. It get good at the end. If you watched the game or if you watched the series, it looked like the Astros were going to be in trouble because they hadn't lost the game all playoffs long and then all of a sudden they get to Philadelphia and they drop a game and they drop a couple games and it looks like they, they're about to lose but then uh, game five the momentum shifted and, and, and I believe if, if it was not the first it was the second no hitter ever pitched in the World Series was it the first it was the first and, and so now the momentum shifts 
And, and, and when I got back to Houston yesterday and I was walking through the airport and it was the fourth inning of the game, I felt like I was walking in a championship city. I promise you, I felt it. I walked in the house, turned the television on, and it was right when, when Jordan hit the three-run home run, and I started screaming. My wife said, what happened? I said, they hit a three-run home run. She said, what's that? I said, it's when it was a couple people on the base, and he hit it, and I got tired of explaining. I said, ah, oh, we winning. And I'm screaming in there. She said, so when did you become? Astros friend, I said, today! Somebody shout, I did it this year. Yeah, I can do what I want to do when it comes to... And I got wrapped up in it, but what I didn't realize is that the momentum brought me in. Oh, you're going to get this in a minute. I ain't just talking, I'm really preaching. The momentum brought me in, now I'm on the team, I'm on the winning side, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of, and, and now I'm in my city, and, and what else do you do? Then I went on Instagram and, and posted it. Congratulations to the city, and we're, I'm, I'm in the momentum, and, and this is what I found out, that what I did yesterday is the same thing that's been going on between heaven and hell. That in the beginning, heaven was up, let there be light. And there was light, let there be fowl and fish. And heaven has the momentum and, and heaven is creating all kinds of light and firmament, which is the spear above the earth and letting it reflect the water. The birds are flying and chirping. The water is running and the enemy is upset because as long as there was water and darkness and light, he was fine. But then when it got to the sixth inning, then God said, let us make man. After our image and our likeness, in the bottom of the six, the enemy gets upset because now God has commissioned his replacement. And let me tell you something, there is nobody more upset with you than somebody who just found out you're better than them. Oh, I'm about to help you. Your problem is you don't understand that you were created to be a replacement. And here you are insecure because you think you don't measure up. And every devil knows that God loves you more than he loves them. I need somebody in the room to shout in this place when you finally recognize that God created you to do something. So what you must understand is that as the enemy is concerned, Everything was fine until he found out that God didn't lose nothing when he lost him. You better hear me when I'm telling you. You better hear what I'm telling you because as long as the enemy was in heaven, he was with God. That was his ride or die. It was his homeboy. But then the devil got beside himself and thought the glory was his and it belonged to God. And God says, let me show you that heaven can run without you. Get out and take your demons with you. Do you understand that you got so much anointing that you can still survive without people you think you need? I dare you slap somebody in this room and shout, I can survive. You ain't about to die because they left you. You ain't about to die because you're confused. You ain't about to die because your job fired you. You're not about to die. I got a prophecy, you shall live. Oh my God, you shall live and not die. Slap three people and say, I shall live, I shall live, I shall live. They trying to kill me, but I shall live. They trying to wipe me out, but I shall live, I shall live. I'm gonna live, I'm gonna live, I will live, I will live. And not die. Sound man, just give me a little bit in the house, it's gonna be on. He kicks them out. And seven, six days later, he creates man, and now Satan is upset. I'm telling you right now, he mad at you. You around here walking like you ain't got an enemy. You around here not praying like ain't nobody mad at you. 
you around here not fasting like you ain't got a devil after you. You better get serious. You got somebody mad at you. He mad at you. He mad at your mama for praying for you. He mad at your children for being the product of your glory. He mad at the world. He mad at everybody. Because you were supposed to be done by now. You were supposed to slit your wrists. You know that bottle of pills that you kept looking at, you were supposed to swallow them all. And that breakup you went through was supposed to break you down. Do me a favor and shout, I'm still standing. Ooh, that ought to take about 29 of y'all. I wish I had about 2,900 people online that are put in the chat, I'm still standing. In spite of it all, I'm still standing. They lied on me and I'm still here. They talked about me and I'm dead here, sound man, and I'm still here. Somebody shout, I'm still Now, now, everybody say momentum. Momentum, momentum. momentum. It's, it's, have you ever, any, any sports watchers, when the, when the sportsman says they got the momentum, what it means, Mike, is that somebody has just become difficult to stop. When, when you got the momentum, you don't got to be the best team, you just got to have it rolling. You got to have it rolling. And, and so what, what is happening here uh, is, 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 is heaven seemingly has lost the momentum. Okay, God creates the garden. Look at, think about it. All of a sudden, birds are flying. All of a sudden, four rivers come. Gihon and Pisha, all of these rivers start splitting off into fours. All of a sudden, God goes down and creates a man. All of a sudden, the birds are looking at what is that? Down there, and here come, walk, here come Adam walking. All this me? You mean I got dominion over all this? Okay, all right, and then here comes the momentum shift because here comes the enemy sneaking in the garden. Here it is. Watch this. And now he brings into being something that has never been seen before, a moment. And now you have a moment up against momentum. And the enemy comes in the garden and says, let me mess up this momentum. Uh, you can have the fruit in the center of the garden. It will not kill you. I can hear Eve saying, you, you sure about that? Yes. I pro so what happened? The Bible says she ate and Adam did eat. And now the momentum has halted. It's halftime. Moment has entered. And Satan thinks that he has it in control. What is momentum? You'll hear all kinds of terms, but let me just get it down into uh, a simple terms. Momentum is, is the weight of a thing times the speed of a thing. And, and when you take the weight of a thing and multiply it by the speed of a thing, the thing that has the most weight and speed will steal the momentum from the thing that doesn't. So if, if, if I am 215 pounds and you take another man that's 415 pounds, we're both the same height, we're both running at the same speed. When we run into each other, I'm going to lose. Why? Because the thing that I am coming up against has more weight. Satan didn't understand that he was boxing out of his weight class. So he comes up against God thinking that because his kingdom is growing, he's got a little speed. But what he don't recognize is he don't have enough weight. I need everybody in this room and online to tell the devil, get your weight up. You messing with somebody who got the kingdom of heaven behind him. And I got prayer warriors. And I got friends at the church. And I got a praying mama. And I got the word of God in my heart. Can I have about 1,500 people shout, I got the momentum. I don't care what the devil said. I don't care what your circumstance says. You've got weight and speed on your side. So the collision happens. 
The collision happens. Satan says, oh, this ain't going to be as easy as I thought. Watch this. God says he initiates this collision by saying, listen to this. Let there be light. Now, before there was light, there was darkness all over the world. And out of the darkness, God still says, let there be. I'm about to give you something. Do you know why the enemy is upset with you? It's because, Mike, in spite of the darkness, you still are. No, you missed it. 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 Because the darkness was supposed to be it. And then God says, I know it's dark, but you still going to be. Can I tell somebody online and somebody in this room, the devil mad at you because the darkness didn't stop you. And I know it ain't properly English, but I still be. Just slap somebody and say, I still be. I still be blessed. I, I still be. I still. Let me just correct it. I, I am still blessed. I, I'm still the head and not the tail. I, I know what they meant for evil was supposed to stop me, but what you meant for evil, God turned it around for my good. I'm still in Potiphar's house in spite of the pit, in spite of the prison. I'm still God's man or woman in spite of what I've been through. Do you understand how much glory you should be giving God that in spite of everything that you have gone through, you still are the head and not the tail. You still are God's decision. You still are the apple of God's eye. Somebody shout, I am. I am what God says I am. I'm not what happened to me. I'm not what I've been through. I am what is said I am. And I, t I put every devil on notice. You ain't got enough weight to stop something that God is backing. Did you hear what I just said? I don't care what your boss wants to do. If God said it, You'll own the company before they can fire you. Oh, you ain't got no faith. You don't have no faith. I'm just looking for 200 people full of faith. I can be rich with no money in my bank account because God says, because God said it. I can be healed even though the doctor's report said I'm sick. Why? Because God said. Somebody shout, I still be. I know it ain't proper English. But he hates the fact that you still are, even in darkness. Let there be light, and the light separated itself from the darkness. Let there be firmament. And I want to separate the waters. I want water to gather, the dry land to appear. Give me birds. Give me, give me fowl. Give me fish. Get, get, let, me, let me get this thing, let me get this thing going. Um, but now I want something in my image. And in my likeness. So let me, let me create man in my image and in my likeness. All right? Momentum is rolling. All right, Noah, bad news. Uh, a snake has snuck in the garden. And it's trying to disturb my momentum with a moment. I'm going to give you about 100, 100 plus years to let all these jokers know it's going to rain. So Noah, his same sermon every Sunday, it's going to rain. Now, I ain't never preached this sermon before in some of y'all sleep, so imagine <laughs> how sleepy they were in church after hearing this same sermon five years straight, a hundred years straight. Noah, you don't study. I can't go to no church where the preachers preach the same sermon. I need somebody to get before the Lord and, 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 and bow at his grave. I need somebody. Noah said, nope, I got one sermon. It's going to rain. You better get your house in order because it's going to rain. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. I imagine he said it different ways, but the message was the same. Hey, guys, guess what? It's going to rain. <laughs> guys, guess what? 
It's going to rain. He kept saying, rain, 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 rain. And they said, well, well, it ain't happened yet. So you, you're a false prophet. It, it, ain't, it ain't making sense. How is it going to rain? It ain't rained yet. It's been 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. But can I tell you, if God said it, it's going to happen. Now Noah is 100 years into his sermon, and now he's building the boat. And it still ain't rain. Now they're like, he done, he done lost it. He done lost it. Now, let me tell you why they thought he lost it. Because while he was building the boat, Noah was out there also planting grapes. Uh-huh. <laughs> Not Welchers. Boone's Farm. Y'all get what I'm saying? Different kind of grapes. Fermented grapes. Don't act like you don't. Come on now. Don't make me start naming y'all drink. I'm going to name your drink, and I know when you say amen which one it is. I know the light from the dark. I can see you. Noah is out here drunk. So now they think he crazy. This man ain't anointed. He high. And then the Bible says that God says this about Noah. He's righteous. I, I, that don't make sense. God, <laughs> good engineer, <laughs> but righteous? How is he righteous and he not only a drunk, but a drunk, naked preacher? <laughs> See, y'all don't read the Bible. See, y'all, are y'all looking at me? Listen, he's naked and drunk building a boat. You gonna trust somebody <laughs> out here talking about it's gonna rain <laughs> with no clothes on? Y'all know how church folks are always judging people's clothes. Can't, can't, can't be. Can't be. And then God says, all right, Noah, I didn't give them enough time. They don't want to hear you. You and your family come in the boat. Y'all, and I'm ready to preach now. He said, Noah, you and your family come in the boat. Pastor Hammond, did you hear what I just said? God said, Noah, come in the boat. He didn't say, Noah, go in the boat. I'm going to talk to this side. God says, Noah, come in the boat. He didn't say, Noah, go in the boat. Kirk, I knew you got it. God said, Noah, come in the boat. Not Noah, go in the boat. Do you know why God said, Noah, come in the boat? Because he was already. Slap three people and say, God's already in it. And when God is in it, he'll change the circumstance. That's why Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't die in the fire because he was already in the fire because when God is in the oven he turns it into an opportunity all I'm trying to tell you is that if God is in it you ain't got to be scared of it slap three people and say God is in it God was in the firing he was in the divorce he was in the bad doctor's report he was in the bankruptcy somebody shout God is in it That's why Lazarus was able to get up because God stepped in the tomb. Anything that God gets in, he changes. So instead of saying, God, stop it, start shouting, God, get in it. God, get in this depression with me. God, get in this insecurity with me. If I can't get out of it, God, get in it with me. Somebody shout, God's in it. He's in it. He's in it. He's in it. And all things are going to work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Somebody shout, God, get in it. <laughs> Only reason why we're talking about Peter is because Jesus got in his boat. You so busy trying to hide it from God. You need to go head on and expose it. God, I got issues. 
Oh, come on. You're so busy trying to act like you don't have a temper, you just need to say, God, I'm crazy. Can you get in my head? I'm about to lose it. You're drowning because he ain't in it. Just invite him in it. He wants to be in it with you. See, people need you to be perfect, not God. Mm. People need you to be a preacher and perfect. God says, you drink, come on up to this pulpit. Because there's some other drinkers out there that need to know that I can save anybody. Are you listening to me? The best way to be effective is to have a testimony. You'd be surprised how many people would listen to you if you stop acting like you've never been through nothing and go ahead on and reveal the fact that you are crazy, deranged. All the crazy people shout in the building. I know you ain't got to tell me. I knew. <laughs> Noah. In seven days, I'm about to make it rain. Somebody shout, make it rain. In seven days, I'm about to change the atmosphere. In seven days, I'm about to make something happen that has never happened before. Now, the reason why y'all ain't shouting is because you think I'm talking to Noah. Uh-huh. I wish I knew your name, but just do me a favor. Say self. In seven days, God's about to change everything. In seven days, your bank account is about to change. In seven days, your circumstance is about to change. In seven days, your name is going to be on somebody's manifest that it has never been on before. In seven days, you're going to get a call you've been waiting on for seven years. Somebody turn around in a circle and shout, God's about to change it in seven days. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. By the time you get to church next Sunday, it's going to turn around. By the time you shout hallelujah again, God's going to change it. Touch three people and say, you got seven days, seven days, seven days. Seven days to open the bank account. Seven days to get your CPA. Seven days to get your taxes in order. Seven days, seven days. You got seven days to heal because there's going to be a husband coming in your direction. You got seven days to pray because there's an opportunity with your name on it. Seven days. Here it is, Kafir. What I'm really saying is you got seven days until it makes sense. In seven days, God's about to explain to you why it all happened. They that wait on the Lord. Seven days. Seven days till you have the clarity that you've been praying for. God, make it make sense. Why we have to meet? I'll tell you in seven days. Because he's the God of grace. He's the God of grace. Everybody say, he's the God of grace. Say it again, he's the God of grace. Not only is he the God of grace, but he's the God of generations. Noah was 600 years old when the flood came. Don't tell me it's too late. I'm 40, it's over. No, baby, you're just getting started. I'm 60, ain't nothing left for me. Are you kidding me? God still got enough time to make 60 your best year.
Noah was 600. Now, the Bible mentioning his age was not an accident. He's the God of generations. This is, this is not an accident uh, because chapter 5 gives the, gene the genealogy and the generations of Noah and the ages of the patriarchs. Noah's father, Lamech, died, listen, at 777. <laughs> okay? Now, his grandfather, Methuselah, lived to be 969 years old. <clears throat> Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. Now, if you take the 600 years of how old Noah was when the flood began, and you take the time of when Lamech and Methuselah died, and you add them up, God did not allow the flood to start until after Methuselah died. Are you listening to me? And the word Methuselah means when he is dead, it shall be sent. So his name means when he's dead, it shall be sent. And the flood doesn't start until after he dies. So it's almost as if God is saying, I love you so much that I won't let it come until you're gone. Uh-uh, you better hear what I'm saying. Do you understand that you have so much anointing on your life that God is literally holding stuff back until you get out of here? Are you listening to me in this place? What some of you all don't understand is that you are the blessing for your generation. There was something the devil had planned for your children, but God says, I ain't going to let it happen because you are. Oh, God. Oh, God. Somebody shout. It shall be blocked. It shall be blocked. I'm speaking to 500 in the room, 5,000 online. You are the only thing in between the devil's plan and your children. And as long as you live, you're going to keep blocking it. Somebody, that's why I got to live. That's why I got to pray. That's why I got to fast. Because God is using me to block the flood from a generation. You don't know what the devil would have done to your children if you were not here. That's why you can't get so depressed you don't want to live. That's why you can't get so depressed you want to die. That's why you can't quit because you are standing in between what the devil has planned and what God is going to do. Somebody shout, it's making sense now. That's why the devil can't kill me. And that's why every time I get depressed, all of a sudden in the middle of the night, I get a little bounce back and I start feeling good again. Why? Because God says, I need you here long enough to block this stuff. Somebody shout, I can do it. I can do it. God says to you, because of your faithfulness, I'm going to hold it back. <laughs> the storm could have happened 200 years ago. But God says, Methuselah, because of your faithfulness, I'm going to hold it back. Do you understand? How many things have been delayed in your life? All because you are the blessing. God says, I need you here long enough to teach your children your work ethic. I need you here long enough to get your prayer life together so they can see you pray. So it ain't making make sense. You think I'm taking you through trouble because I don't love you. I'm taking you through trouble so you'll learn how to pray. And I got three children watching you because in order for them to survive their life, they're going to have to be prayer warriors. Do you see what God is doing? Somebody shout yes. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Am I making sense to anybody? You and God don't have the same plan. 
the world that your children live in? The faith that our kids are going to need to survive this world? Ain't no Sunday school. Ain't no vacation Bible school. Teachers can't even say nothing to children anymore. So it, it, you can't have a village raising a child because the parents going to shoot anybody who say something to the child. You can't go to a football game without a drive-by. You can't go to a basketball game without a fight. The world is going crazy. In order for your children to survive, they're going to have to be grounded. In order to survive this world, your children are going to need temperance that we didn't need to exercise because our temper got us in the fight. You get into a fight with somebody today, traffic is a nightmare. You can get shot on the freeway. God says, I am building something up in your children because I'm the God of generations. And I am using you to hold it back until I'm ready. Not only is he the God of generations, here's my favorite part. He's the God of guarantees. <laughs> my favorite five words in the entire text. Are you ready? Verse 16. Everybody's in the boat. Water's about to start coming. My favorite five words in the text. Y'all ready? The Lord shut him in. Now let me tell you why the Lord shut him in. Because all those people who ignored him for a hundred years. Noah. Let us up in this piece. What you mean ain't no room? You see how big this boat is? It ain't but 80, y'all. Noah's basically saying, my vision is only big enough for people who believed me before they needed me. Y'all not here with me today. It don't matter how big it is. You're not in it because of how small you are. Had you heard what I said when I was saying it, you would be in here with me. Don't make nobody make you feel bad because you got the blessing and they didn't. It's because you did something they didn't do. It's because you were obedient when they were not. It was because you were praying when they were not. Somebody shout, I got favor and I know it. And you ain't going to make me feel bad because I got a boat and you don't. You could have had a boat too. He was handing out boats for everybody. God shut him in. He shut him in. You know why? Because Noah's old good heart itself would have opened the door and let some people in. And you know when you let one of them in. So sometimes God shuts the door on you to protect you from your decisions. No matter how many times you try to date him again, you ain't going to never love him like that again because God said, I shut the door because I know the end from the beginning. Y'all ain't saying nothing in this place today. I know you wanted to bring it back together for the family. I know you wanted to give him another chance. I know you wanted to go back to that job, but God says, I shut you in. I shut you into single motherhood. I shut the door on dating for you. It was my design for you to be single in this season. I shut you in. God, where my husband at? That's what the preacher said, but it ain't your season. I shut you in. Because had I not shut the door that no man could open, you would have opened the door and let men in whose destiny was never to be on the boat. 
How many people in the room and online are drowning because you opened the door that God shut? If God shut you in, I don't care how lonely you are, you better stand there by yourself. <laughs> Who am I talking to here? If God shut that door, Too many locksmiths in the church. God says, listen to me, Noah. I have no grace for anybody who rejected you. I got a word for you. God says, in this next season of your life, no grace to anybody who rejects you. When you are in the will of God, and you are doing what God told you to do, and they cannot see the God in you, God says, don't worry about it. I'll shut the door, and I'll end the grace for the people who don't see I'm working with you. Noah wasn't perfect. Noah was a drunk, but he was God's choice. Slap your neighbor and say, don't mess with me. God picked me. I don't care what you think about me. God still got his hand on me. You might not have liked my decision, but God still loves me. And let me tell you something. Don't mess up your future trying to judge my past. You better hear what I said. You don't, don't mess up your tomorrow trying to look at my yesterday. Your business is your business. My business is my business. But, but, but let me tell you something. I got the boat. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, I got the boat. You can say whatever you want about me, but I got the boat. You can talk about my drinking habits, but I got the boat. You can talk about what I did, but I got the boat. So does it matter what you think about me? I'm on the boat. He's the God of grace, represented by the people of judgment. It never ceases to amaze me how judgmental Christians are and how much grace they need. You got people still around here mad five, ten years later at somebody for something that they did that don't even affect them. Talking about, I ain't ready. Who are you? He's the God of grace. The way to make sure you stay on the boat is to operate in the grace of God. How is it that God calls Noah righteous when he was an alcoholic? Because of how he was on the inside. And listen, Noah was so good on the inside that God saved his whole family. He's the God of generations. What God is going to do in your life is going to affect, listen, not just your family, but your in-laws. Oh, I need to, I need to, I need to, come here, come here, come here. Because some of y'all don't like. Some of y'all don't like them peoples on their side of the family. I don't mean, them your people. But Noah had in-laws on the boat. So some of y'all need to fix that in-law relationship. Mm-hmm. I'm just looking at you to find out where I'm going to hit this ball. Left field, center field. I'm a bun and I'm just trying to figure out what direction this ball needs to go in. I know they get on your nerve, but when God finishes with this thing, it ain't but one boat. Ain't going to be an in-law boat and an us boat. When you get married, y'all all in this thing. Y'all hear that? That's that church mouse on cotton. Y'all hear that? Y'all hear that? You better get over yourself. Oh, because I'm telling you, it's going to rain. And y'all going to need each other. You hear me? You don't ever know because remember, his ways are not your ways and his thoughts are not your thoughts. And you might think the people you depend on are going to always be there. But what happens?
I can feel y'all pulling on me like, preacher, stay right there because this is what we've been arguing about. And I can't say nothing because every time I say something about her daddy or her mama, she get to fussing at me. So God, use the preacher to preach for me right now. Because it was Noah's sons and their wives on the boat. What would have happened if the in-laws would not have been on the boat? Noah's sons wouldn't have had anybody to procreate with. And everybody would have been dead. Because Noah was too old to be giving us any more children. But his sons had children with their wives. And now all of us are a result of what happened in the cabin suites on the ark. Come on now, y'all. Y'all ain't. <laughs> Do you know how much wine was on that boat? Only thing they was doing is floating and drinking. Float, float on, float on, float on, float, float, float. They floating, literally inside and outside. And here come the babies. You know how many babies born on cruises. Come on, y'all. So when you shut half of the family off, you stop the productivity. He's the God of generations. Are y'all still with me? I'm almost done. I got three minutes. I might take six more after that. Can I get six minutes? I can imagine that the flood waters begin to rise. I want all of y'all to hear that pounding on the door. No! I got kids out here. You know, everybody, when they are trying to manipulate, we got kids. I do too. Noah, if you don't open that door, now they start off nice. Please, Noah. Then when they can't <laughs> get your chain, Noah, uh, Noah, you better open that door, Noah. <laughs> Noah, like, I can't because the Lord shut me in. <laughs> Noah, I'm telling you, dog, if you don't open this door, Noah said, bro, you should have been listening to me. I do not open the doors to people who reject my vision. Can I tell you who you should be dating? Somebody who sees your vision, not you. Because if you date somebody because they see you, you will leave them because they don't see your vision. Yeah. Noah said, I'm not opening this door because we don't see things the same. And you're not going to convince me in desperation that now all of a sudden you got religion because you didn't see me during construction. You can't see. Oh, y'all ain't here with me. So no, I can't, I can't open the door. And hell is happy because hell said, stop the momentum. God got rid of me and now all of them are dead. You know, the ones he created in his image. Satan said, I stopped the momentum. <laughs> it's my moment, my moment to shine. I can see God. Like, this dude ain't, he ain't got a clue. He, he, ain't, he ain't got a clue. Um, so, so let's go over to 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 18. The Bible says, for Christ also had suffered for sin, and the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Who's us? The Gentiles. 
the ones who drowned. Being put to death in the flesh. Are y'all reading this? But quickened by the Spirit. Watch this. By which also he went to preach to the spirits that were in the prison. One old preacher said, this is literally God going to hell and preaching a three-day revival. He says, Satan, you thought that it was over? Let me help you make this make sense. In my plan, I already had a clause that I would go and preach to the disobedience that died in the days of Noah. Are y'all this? So Satan thought the flood was it, but he didn't know that God was already preparing to go to those who had drowned and give them the gospel that they might have an opportunity to get on the other ship, the old ship of Zion. Come on, church. Now, now watch this. Isn't it amazing that the writer of 1 Peter is the apostle Peter? Where does God meet Peter? Boy, boy, boy. Y'all missing this. When God meets Peter for the first time, he's on the boat fishing. Now, watch this. So he starts off with Noah outside of a boat. He starts the New Testament church with Peter inside of a boat and says to everybody who accepts Jesus Christ by the Spirit will now have their name written in the Lamb's book of life and now get a free ticket to the ship of Zion. Y'all not here with me today? Let me help you make it make sense. What God wants you to know is that it doesn't matter how it starts. He already has a plan for how it's going to finish. And even though it doesn't start off in your favor, all things will eventually work together for your good. That's how it's going to make sense that no matter what the enemy has done, it's going to work out in your favor. Slap three people and say, that's what makes sense that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. And even in your disobedience, God still has a ticket with your name on it. Is there anybody online and in this room that wants to give God glory that what the enemy meant for evil Tell your neighbor what the enemy meant for evil God's going to turn it around for your good. If you believe it, give them 15 seconds. Come on, somebody give them glory. Now watch this. Let me tell you what's amazing. God says, I'm about to get the momentum back. I never saw this before until last week. Remember Ephesians 5 when it says, husband loves your wives? Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her with the cleansing, here it is, by the washing by the word. How did they end up in the water? Because they didn't listen to the word. Now, who is the bride? We are. Who is the groom? He is. So is he talking to us only in Ephesians 5? Or is, he, or is he completing the salvation story from the beginning? Husband, love your wife. As Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, watch this, with the cleansing and the washing of the water and the word. They died because they wouldn't take the word and they died in water. So how does God get the momentum back? He says, this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to become the water and the word. I'll just become the word made flesh 
and I'll be the water as the Holy Spirit, thereby taking away the two things that the enemy has used to keep people out of the kingdom of God. So now God becomes water and word and redeems us back to him that there where he is, we may be also. I got a word for you. The devil intends for you to go to hell. But if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, can I tell you something? No, just tell your neighbor, I ain't going. Oh, you missed that. You missed that. But you were disobedient. I ain't going. You got drunk. I ain't going. You lied. I ain't going. Why? Because God has now become the propitiation of sin, and those who are in him shall live and never die. I need somebody in this room and somebody online over the next nine seconds to say, now it makes sense. God had already saved me before the foundation of the world. I didn't get saved because I confessed. I confessed because I was already saved. You better hear what I just said. I feel like running in here today. I ain't got no Bible readers in here. You think you got saved because you walked down that aisle? No, you walked down that aisle because God had went to hell and preached a revival and saved you from the depths of hell. You don't express God to get saved. You expressed him because you were picked. It's called the predestination of God. That means that even while you were yet a sinner, Christ was already dying for you, and you didn't get saved because you joined the church. You joined the church because you was already saved. That's why you can't get unsaved, because the salvific power of God is perfected, and what God has put together, you know the marriage ceremony, no man can put asunder. Slap your neighbor and say, me and God married for life. Now I need about 500 people to start shouting in this place today because God told me to tell you that it's about to make sense. Slap somebody on the hand and shout neighbor. God told me to tell you all things are going to work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. If you can't find a neighbor, find one of these people who look like they got joy on their face and shout, neighbor, I may not be on the boat, but I'm in God. Y'all miss what I just said. I might not be in the in crowd, but I'm in God. I might not be on your list, but my name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. The point of it all is I'm saved. Are y'all praying with me here? Give your neighbor a high five and shout, neighbor, you can have this whole world, but just give me Jesus. You can have the cars, you can have the money, but I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Have I got a witness today? Oh, yeah. Grab a neighbor by the hand. I feel the Holy Ghost in the room tonight. Grab your neighbor by the hand and shout, neighbor, I got a song that the angels can't sing uh, and that song is uh, what a wonderful change has been wrought uh, in my life uh, since Jesus uh, I feel mighty good in here y'all since Jesus uh, came in uh, into my heart uh, have I got a witness today uh, grab your neighbor by the hand uh, and squeeze it uh, Wheel them and rock them, rock them and reel them, reel them and rock them, rock them and reel them, reel them and rock them, rock them and reel them, and shout, neighbor, I don't care what you got to say about it, I'm blessed, I got favor, I don't care what you say, I don't care what you think. I'm on the boat, shout I'm on the boat, shout I'm on the boat. Is there anybody in the room today that feels the glory of God? Open your mouth and shout yeah, shout yes, yes to his will, yes to his way, shout yeah, shout yeah. Open up your mouth and shout, yeah, 
up your mouth and shout, it's my season, it's my time, yeah. Can you feel the glory? Can you feel the glory? Can you feel the glory? Shout it, yeah. Shout it, yeah. Shout it, yeah. Shout it, yeah. make it make sense I'll do it at the end but in the meantime you better hear what I'm saying and you better be on that boat or it won't make sense God make it make sense I got you and I've already factored in your disobedience I factored in your flaws I factored in your hesitation, but you cannot stop trusting me because you're drowning. Did you hear what I said? God said, you cannot stop trusting me because the water is above your head. If you don't believe that I can save you from drowning, then you can't believe I can save you from hell. Don't you look at what you're going through and be confused about who I am. I'm God and I fail not. And since when have I ever done anything that suggests that I can't be trusted? I'm the same God that spoke the water. You don't think? that I can tell the water not to enter your lungs? Do you know who I am? I rule the world. God, make it make sense. It'll be all over in the morning. God, make it make sense. I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Look your neighbor in the eye and tell him, it'll be all over in the morning. Look at somebody else and tell him, ain't no need to worry. What the night is gonna bring. Oh yeah. It'll be all over. Raise your hands. In the morning, ain't no need to worry. Well, the night is going to break. It'll be all over, I promise you. In the morning, in the morning. sing it. It'll be all over. Ain't no need to worry. Open your mouth and sing it. yourself and shout it'll be Night, but joy. 
make it make sense. I got it. I'm in control. <laughs> Fret not thyself because of evildoers, for they shall soon be cast down. You're worrying about things that God already has a contingency plan for. That's why he says, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, not they who worry the Lord. Not they who have anxiety, not they who throw themselves at the altar, those who wait on him. I learned a long time ago that it started making sense when I realized that his ways were not my ways and his thoughts were not my thoughts. And I was the one thinking about it wrong and I wanted to inform God about how I was feeling. I want to God, God, do you see what I'm going through? God says, I see it. Not only did I see it, I invented it. Have you considered my servant Job? What if I told you that God sent the enemy in your direction on purpose and you're looking at the boils and the death and God says you're missing the double? Did you hear me? This ain't about death and destruction. It's about double. It's about God being able to get you back ahead of where you started after you've fallen. For when you have been tried by the fire, you shall come forth as pure gold. Do me a favor if you're not germaphobic and hug your neighbor and say, it'll be over in the morning. Ain't no need to worry. Yeah. Ain't no need to worry. What the night is gonna bring. It'll be all over. Ain't no need to worry. Wave your hand and say it'll be. In the morning, open your mouth and shout it in the morning. It'll be all over. It'll be all over. It'll be all over. It'll be all over. In the morning, one last time. It'll be. It'll be. I'm promise. In the, morning. in the morning come on and give God some praise in this place today if you believe that this is the year of manifested promises and that God is about to make it make sense